Hey guys, and welcome back to Let's Review with a Random Podcast of Awesomeness. With us today are... It's been long enough. Burke 168. Cloud. Shadow Wolf. Butthurt Scrub. And we're at 14. February 15, 2014. With the continuation of our podcast. Yeah, um, sorry that we were gone for so long, guys. It was oh, Gareth's fault. Or, we had, yeah, yeah my fault. Oh. She's gone for a month. So my uh, Super Famicom exploded and it, <laughs> and my my house burned down. <laughs> so, Dude, yeah. not cool. Yeah. And I moved the Lives were lost. So yeah, we've been having we've been having our own uh, technical difficulties. Anyway, I, we're back. What happened was we're back at least this week, and um, yeah, we have uh, cheese is not with us tonight, even though he was the one that picked out the fire. What a scrub! He was in a fire. And we house. picked, and he picked out. <laughs> Kingdom Hearts, Chain of Memories. Spit into your microphone more, Gerda. Damn. Jesus, Gerda. Yeah. <laughs> Compensating for the fact that his mic is so fucking low, <laughs> nobody can hear him. It's just fine on me, once again. Alright, so... Kingdom Hearts, Chain of Memories. It is the... I guess... Sequel? It's a sequel. To, it's, it's, it's a sequel to the first Kingdom Hearts game. It was released for the GBA in... Does Cloud know which year it was released in? That was it before 2006. Um, yeah, yeah it was 2005. So because that's when this YouTube Japan, video I'm watching was released. Yeah, it's it's basically the bastard child of Kingdom Hearts. Yes, and yes. Instead of taking the basic formula that it had, which was pretty much not a beat 'em up, but it was just like an action action adventure game, it implemented a card battle system where you use cards which either have a keyblade, a speller ability, or a special ability, as in... Or summoning. Yes, the summonings, as in the form of Disney characters and Kingdom Hearts characters. And, uh... Disney characters and Final Fantasy characters. Like Scrooge McDuck. I summon <laughs> Donald Duck in attack mode. Yes. Yes. We really needed the Yu-Gi-Oh! reference, apparently. Yes, we, re- we, we really needed it. We, we have to make it this podcast somehow. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I can't drink. Where would we be if we didn't have Yu-Gi-Oh? Let me just say that for the record. So this game, right, um, social butterflies. Yes, this game is um. For it's Microsoft different. Fears, it's not. It's not great if you haven't played. I mean, if you haven't played like Tricky the Mars game before, you're gonna be like, "What the fuck is going on? Who the fuck are all these people? Yeah. Why do I care?" You, you appreciate it more if you've played the games in chronological order. If you don't, then you do what I did and use the speed up feature and and play the game at 1,000 frames per second. <laughs> Because as we all know, he has a modded GBA, of course. I do. So this guys, time it's from India. So you guys don't think this? Is, you guys don't think this is bearable to play on the original GBA format? I I oh, I know I played him beating it. I played him beating it on the original GBA format. It's not so much that it's a bad game because it's not. It's just the fact that really this is a game for the fans of the first one. No, like, this it, is not a. I don't think this is a great first introduction to the series uh, for uh, obvious reasons. I, I, this is a, People. Yeah, I'd have to say, I, I'd have to agree with that, because the only reason I got the game is because this game came out about the time I just finished Kingdom Hearts 1, and I was like, oh my god, I have to get this, because I saw the commercial and I heard the music, and I was like, aw, snap. Aw, snap, and then you're like, aw, snap, card battles. And then my mom bought it for me, and no, I loved the game. The first time I played through it, I loved the game. I beat it in, like, a month. It was ridiculous, but... Uh. You have, you have to forget, I'm not a hardcore gamer, Herp. True, true. He's not. He plays, he plays with his, his kin, the Kindle. I was about to say Kindle. 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 He, he, <laughs> <laughs> my <laughs> Kindle gaming he console. Plays, he's Kindle games is checkers. Anyway. All right, now, um, do you guys mind if I actually do a little bit of story exposition? Go for it. Go for it. All right, Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories takes place almost directly after the first game. Where um, you have your heroes Sora, Donald, and Goofy trying to find their lost friends Riku and the other chick that I don't actually Kyrie. know. Kyrie. Uh, Kyrie. Yeah, her. And um, because because you were successful in sealing the sealing Kingdom Hearts or whatever has happened, um, King Mickey is also missing. So you're looking for him too. While on the, while along the way, uh, Sora and gang actually hears a rumor of this tower in the middle of nowhere. Castle they go Oblivion. to this tower only to find that Organization 13 is there waiting for them. And that's your bare bones setup. Okay, just to uh, so. make it a point I made earlier, I have no clue what the fuck you could have just said. Exactly. It's a, it's, it's a, it sounds like a very basic formula for an adventure story. 
in it my is. opinion. I have no context though, which is my mostly my big gripe is I have no context for any of these events. As, as Corp and Burke were both saying, if you haven't played Kingdom Hearts, it won't one, make any sense. You really, should, you really yes. should probably stay away from this thing. Yeah, yeah. I, I just skipped all the cuts. I skipped oh. all the cuts. So I'll, yeah. stay, yeah. I'll stay. I'll stay away from this guy. Well, Sorry. we're not we're not saying stay away from it, but don't play it for the story because you won't understand it unless you've played the other game. That's not true. I didn't play Kingdom Hearts One. I played very little of King Kingdom Hearts. But you, II. but you know, but you know about the story. Unless you know about the story a little bit. I mean, if this is like your first Kingdom Hearts game, the first time you've ever heard of it, you won't get it at all. Yeah, especially when this game has this a game lot of dialogue. Years, yes, so. it, it's a very story-driven game. Yeah. And um, that doesn't sound good. No, it's great. No, no, no the story's it's, good. It's not a bad thing. But it's not a bad thing. It's just it's bad if you haven't played the first Kingdom Hearts because why the actually if you play the if you haven't played the first Kingdom Hearts why the fuck are you playing this? Yeah, because um, I need a GBA game to emulate. Yeah, it's not a great GBA game. So. You okay, yeah, okay, but we're, we're my experience everything. We're we're getting off track. I had a Disney Princess game for my okay, GBA. Gerda, okay, Gerda, Gerda, that's enough out of you. Yeah, stop talking. Just quiet. And, okay, and. To progress a little bit more on the story, all of the friends that Sora met in Kingdom Hearts One when he enters, don't ca him. Well, yes, when he enters Sorry. Castle Oblivion, they all forget him. The only people that recognize him are the members of Organization Thirteen. They know which, them in his heart, the which heart it's a whole other story. At the same storm. time, he doesn't exactly remember them either, but he kind of remembers them, and he's like, "What?" No, he what like the first time he is them, when, when they when they go to Traverse Town, he meets with Aeris. And he remembers Aeris perfectly. Like he knows who they are, but they don't remember him at all. But they, right. they, they, they have this. They have this somewhat feeling that they know that they know him, but they just yes. can't remember him. And this actually is explained with a plot point later on. We're not yes. going to try and spoil. We're not. It, yeah, we're going to try and make this as spoil free as you want because as we can. Because again, King, the Kingdom Hearts series is a very story driven game. Try it out if you uh, if you can if you have the resources for it. It's a great it's a great story altogether. <laughs> Let's just say it's called Chain of Memories for a reason. Yes. Yeah. Now, as I said earlier, Kingdom Hearts is a mixture of Square Enix and Disney. There are many, many, many Disney characters and environments in this game. Sadly, the only uh, Square Enix characters you'll find are Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy series. Yes, there's no Chrono Trigger, no Dragon Warrior, stuff like that. No Dragon Quest monsters. Yes. I... It's okay, Gerdad. You'll live. I will. Now, what point do we want to go on first? Gameplay. Oh, gameplay. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, that's a big gameplay. One. You use a card system. It's a very. At first, it's a very. You know, just hit A a lot, do yeah. things. Later on in the game, though, once you get car like a lot of good cards, you can combo them together in pairs of three. I will actually say that I did like the combat system. At first, it's, it seems very mashy. Like you may just mash that you can just mash the A button, but there's like some strategy involved with it, obviously because you can stack the cards. Yes. To create uh slides or you know just combos, and if if your opponent uses a card at the same time as you do, and theirs is higher than yours, they will do what is called a card break, which will stop you and leave you vulnerable to attacks. So you always have to leave those because the zero cards in the game yeah. can uh they they can they, they can break, break everything. everything. Okay, break so everything. that's another thing I wanted to bring up. The number system on the cards. Every card has a, a number, 0 through 9. 1 through 9, if whatever card is higher, higher will go through and the other card will get card broken and do nothing. 0 will card break any card, which is really good actually because those bo boss battles in this game are ridiculous if you don't have zeros. Although true, there is a point that you got to bring up, Corb. What is that? Um, like? Zero only works if you, you if you use it after an opponent does. Yes. And also, we we did mention earlier the things with the slices they're very powerful. But when you use one, the first card that you used in that uh in that combo, the the stack cards, it will disappear for the rest of that battle. Yes. Actually, that's the same with all fusions. Yep. Yes. So you have limited resources if you're going to do card combo, which is why. Despite there being a lot of strategy in here, I actually find myself mashing the A button through most of the boss fights and doing relatively well. All right, and yeah, I was able to do that as well. Well, that practically covers the combat. Now, for gameplay-wise of traversing the maps, every map has a oh, couple. Well, you forgot to mention something. Actually. Oh wait, Burke, yes. 
Well, we, I forgot to mention was like it's very small, but obviously the enemies, the enemies you fight, you see them before. before that's you, what I was gonna bring up. That's what I was gonna oh, bring up. Okay. Yeah, um, there is uh, there's no real overworld. You will go to your different towns through Castle Oblivion. But every time you beat one of the, you know, I guess you would call them a stage boss type thing, you get to move on to more worlds, and every world has different paths you can go on, and usually you have to go through the different paths and. When you defeat certain enemies, you get key. You Card. get key cards, yes, which practically lets you open up certain doors, and they'll actually open up any door. And the thing about it is that depending on on what kind of, what variety you use to open that door, you can make the next room different. Like just in terms of uh, what uh, of what, what, what what's what, in there. What, what, yeah, what's in there? What Ex drops, except for the story house. doors. Except for story yeah. doors. And also the, the, the enemies you see. Before you fight them, if you, you can actually attack you can, them, yeah, you can get a a a, um, a preemptive strike. I guess yes, you would call like it, if, like I, like in Final Fantasy. Yes, you can get a preemptive strike where they all come in stunned or dazed or something, and yeah, for about five seconds they're totally immobile. Yes, um, there's also destructible items on the sub world where you can destroy and get different keyblade cards, different uh, just uh, combat cards in general, and you can also get experience, correct? Uh, you can't get experience. Oh, money. You can, get health and, you can get health and money. Yes. Well, yeah, you get experience points, and it's a very, very, very basic upgrade tree. It's yes, it's very basic. Linear. It's, it's very basic, linear, actually. Yeah, it's like you get health, CP, or um, the third option is... It's new slides. New slides, yep. New slides, okay, yeah. And that's it. But oh. you literally, I, I believe that you can choose anyone you want. That you you can. I don't think that you can actually go the, go the different paths. Like you can literally get them all as as long as you level up. Because eventually you you have to get the third one. I that want, you haven't got it yet. I wanted to bring that up. You yes, you do have three basic upgrades. Your slights, which are like special ability type things, uh, passive or active. You have your health points, and then you have the card points. With card points, you practically have a deck of cards, and you can only use every card has a certain amount of card points that you have to have to use it, and your deck can only. Be, you, I think you can ha I don't think there's a limit to how many cards you can put in your deck, but the limit is you can't exceed the number of card points you have. So let's say you have a hundred card points and you're trying to use your let's say you're at ninety eight and you're trying to put in a card that uses three card points. You can't do that. Well there are no cards in game. Uh, I'm just I'm, it's just okay. an exa just an example. And it's a very balanced system because if it was just that you could put any card into your deck, the game would just be too easy. I mean, you would just put everything you get into one deck. Actually, that would make the game a little I, harder. I personally hate that because one of the things get in everything. that actually drags on is, is searching through your deck if you don't have it sorted. If you don't have it sorted prior to combat. Yeah. Mm, there is a there is a bit of micromanagement in this game that you pretty much have to do, or else everything will be too jumbled. Yeah, over. everything will be too jumbled. Berksog agrees. He's angry yes. that we haven't discussed the music yet. The music is classic Kingdom Hearts music. Oh, yeah. In, in all seriousness, a lot of tracks. I believe a lot of tracks from Kingdom Hearts One uh, come back. I'm not entirely sure if they're remixed. Kind of remixed, yeah. But the I thing don't like is, the Trevor's Town song at all. I like Trevor's Town. <laughs> the, the thing is, the, the, the main thing about the music is it's catchy. I really have expertise on this because a lot of the time while I was playing, I had the music off. Not because it was necessarily bad, but because since I'm an emulator, I can listen to other tunes. Yeah. Wait, what? Wait, wait, wait. Gurnet use an emulator? Yeah. What? Use an emulator. Wow, Gurnet. I'm not sure if you can be on this podcast anymore. We don't endorse that. I do. Well, we we, we all own the games. The, the music is very... I wouldn't say, well... Not all of it's really memorable. Like, it'll match like where you're at. Like, if you're in Araba or... Wait, what's the place called? Agrabah. Agrabah, yeah. If you're in Agrabah, it's just like your normal, stereotypical Egyptian music. To be honest, because that's exactly Arabian. what it is. Shut up. I was going to say. Sorry, I'm very tired. Um, the 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 only really noticeable music is from like the, the Jeffer Jeffer Town Traverse Town because that's actually a remix of the song from Kingdom Hearts One for Traverse Town. 
Can I ask a uh, Can I ask a question? Go for sure. broke. What do you Go do in What do you do in Traverse Town? Do you? It's traverse? it's a, it's a stage. Nope, it's one of the levels. Well, that's not entirely yeah. Or if you do traverse through Traverse Town. Derp. <laughs> but um. Uh, yeah, Traverse Town is your intro stage and gets you familiar Axe with armor. a few of the plot elements that are going around. Axe armor. Axe no, armor. no axe armor. No, what, what's his name? What was the big boss's name? I don't remember. Axe armor? No, it's not axe armor. It's something on. It's something guard or something. Oh, but it's aside from the point. Uh, yeah, that's Eat pretty good for music. <laughs> the music isn't really that memorable unless you're a huge Kingdom Hearts fan, then you'll notice a lot of it. Uh, graphics? graphics? Their, their music is pretty themic. Yeah, it's pretty themic. It is. I think, uh, I think, what was it, Atlantica actually has a remix of Under the Sea playing at all times? I think so. Combat, which, is, <laughs> which is really cool, but it's Under the Sea. You can only listen to so long before going back. No, you think, no, no. You know what makes you mad when you're playing Kingdom Hearts 2 and you're in, um, Atlantica? And... They freaking make you do... Shadow, have you played Kingdom Hearts 2? Yeah. Okay, you know the part where you have to do the t t uh, button timing actions to do that to do the song? You have to actually play Under the Sea. It's like, you have to do all right. like the... T I hated that. Because it's just like, if you failed it, you have to listen to the whole song over and over <laughs> and over <laughs> and over <laughs> and over again. It's oh terrible. Because so it was not a good song. No, it's a good song, but after hearing it about 40 times because you missed one button, <laughs> it got pretty annoying. Like, it made you memorize, but... <laughs> no, darn it. One second, guys. <laughs> we worked hard on this song. We want you to hear it. And lifted it right from the VHS copy we did. Under the Z. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, aside from so the graphics, graphic. I, I really like the graphics. The graphics are nice and smooth. They're not edgy at it's all, nice and the the transition to battle is pretty nice. I will grant that, but I do have I do have a, a one issue in that it's um this really does feel like it was that, like this game was supposed to be on a on a high power console because even though it the, was the, the even though the graphics really do look smooth. I feel like they would look a lot smoother on an actual console. Well, Gerda, oh, of course it would. Gerda, you know, you know that they redid Chain of Memories for the PlayStation <laughs> Two, right? Uh, I thought, I thought that was re Chain of Memories. It's, it's the same game. It is. Yes, huh. it's just ported to the PlayStation that. Two and has it's in Kingdom Hearts PS Two graphics. Well, that's kind of cool. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, but the thing about it, Gerda, is that. They're trying to make a game for the Kingdom Hearts fans. They're going to change it too much more. It's unrecognizable. This might have played the first one. And it does feel like a lot of these models were ripped from the P from the PS2 Kingdom Hearts one game. Of and course, then downgraded for the GBA. Well, of course, oh, they're six, they're yeah. staple enemies in the Kingdom Hearts series. I suppose. The only, like they introduced a couple new monsters, and then Kingdom Hearts two had a couple new monsters and. Heartless, rather. They're heartless, yeah. But yeah, the characters are good. The backgrounds are pretty good. Like, and they, they really... they they Just for being, like, the sprites that they are, they have really good facial expression. Like, Axel, even even when he's not talking and you get to see, like, little portrait, you can t you can tell his facial expressions. His f you, can, you can definitely tell it's Axel just by looking at his face. Like, they did a good job with that. This is true. And the cutscenes are nice. And the cutscenes are really nice. They also made a good the job of... They are nice. They did a good job of making Sid look as much as Naruto as they could. That's not... No, he's Sid from Final Fantasy VII. I know, and he looks like Naruto. He looks like Sid from Final <laughs> Fantasy VII. He looks like Naruto. He looks like Naruto. Yes. I don't think he looks like Naruto. You guys are weird. Well, from FF7, he doesn't. In Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories, he most certainly looks like Naruto. Wait, what's, his, what's his name? Sid. Sid. A.K.A. the most broken guy in King, uh, Final Fantasy VII. No. Yes. We'll have that debate in another time, Corb. Anyway, um, I do have to agree with you on the portraits, because a lot I can't actually tell who's talking without the nameplates, although having the nameplates there is still a good idea. Yep. And, um, oh, and another thing we didn't bring up is there are actually CGI cutscenes, and it's a GBA game, which is really nice. 
Yeah, they're nice, but they definitely look choppy. It's a GBA. What do you expect? Yeah, yeah, I know, but but there are but you didn't need to have them be CGI. You could have had them use in-game graphics and up the graphical quality a bit. No, I like the CGI cutscenes, like the one with Nomine drawing uh, pictures. I like that cutscene. You know, I do think it's kind of nice because it brings it brings you to what the what you normally see from the series. Yes. A lot of fantastic artwork, very good music, and yeah, Disney characters. Yep. Donald Duck. And uh, what? Yes, Donald Duck. Now that we're done with graphics, well, now that we're done with graphics, are are there things we want to complain about? Hell yes. Oh yes, I have lots of things that I want. First to First thing, Jafar. Fuck Jafar. Actually, I had almost no problems with Jafar. I had so many fucking problems with Jafar. I want to have some bitch about. Go for I don't it. know what the fuck is going on. <laughs> yeah, but... Th <laughs> that's your fault. It's my fault for for choosing not to play Kingdom Hearts. It's your yes. fault, yes. Hey, 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 hey. You shut your mouth. I did not choose this game for the podcast. I was like, okay, I will be a good, a good podcaster and play this game with no previous experience. Uh, let's see, what's another thing? My main complaints what? are the uh, the spikes in difficulty in the bosses. Um, during your first uh, stage set, you uh, when you go over to the uh, the Greek Colosseum, uh, and you're going. Oh through God, the Hades! Door, oh my God! Hades will kick your ass, especially if you don't know what you're doing. It's not so bad of a fight, but a after him, the game is actually quite uh, quite a breeze for me. Yeah. At least it was until I got into one of the final fights with Shadow Riku. I haven't beat him yet, and I'm not entirely sure if I can. Five Dude. health marks, huge damage, and he pretty much goes with 21 power all the time. To be honest, to play this game, you don't have to grind, but if you don't, but you it, should. Yeah, if you don't, like I'm usually totally ask. You can get it from anybody here. I hate grinding in any game, but to be honest, you kind of have to because you need the card points so badly. Because I thought myself not upgrading card points as much as just raw HP so I could take more damage. Yeah. Well, in defense of the game... Yeah, that's what I did a lot fighting, too. Fighting isn't, that, isn't really bad, because the combat is fun, at least for me. I like the yeah, combat. Yeah, the, the combat doesn't really get stale, because it can be different every time. It doesn't get stale until you've been playing it for three hours straight. Yeah. It's like, okay, we've been killing this enemy for the past two and a half hours. Keep killing him. Yeah. Another yeah, thing we, I have to complain about. The... Walker, that... While you were going, so no, go, 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 bro, go. All right, there are a lot of gimmicks in this game. A few of them are actually pretty cool, but a few of the normal enemy gimmicks just astound me and piss me off at the same time. <laughs> right. uh, like Cor like Corp was saying, an Agraba, there, that this is the first instance that we need our large bulky enemy. The problem with large bulky enemies is they constantly have a permanent shield in front. And if you attack that shield, instead of, you know, your card value actually being applied, it just deflects off and you become stunned for about two seconds. You have well, to attack them from the back, and the only way you can really do that is with a preemptive strike early on. Because after that, they pretty much hound you for the, for the rest of the match. Or you just use fire. Do they, uh, do they also... Tr True spells work really well on them, but there are a few other enemies in the game that are like that too. Like in the, like in the beauty in the enchanted castle. Yeah. Uh, sleep from sleep from uh, Beauty and the Beast. The uh, the heavy armor knights with the with the huge shields and fireball attacks. Even using spells yeah. doesn't really work, and you have to attack them from the back. But they're always paired with mages that you have to kill first. But the mages sprites are almost always on top of the heavy armor knights. Yeah. So you have to attack a mage. But you end up hitting the shield instead. Yeah, to be honest, the the all the enemies in this game are really kind of bland. Like none of the enemies really make your eyes pop out. It's more so the bot, like not that, but I mean, like there's nothing really that stands out. The noise. It's the bosses that usually are like your. You're like, oh, that's pretty cool. I like this boss. It's a pretty good design. And our boss in particular, and maybe even the Ursula boss to some extent were actually really cool to look at, and I like the Maleficent boss as well. Yeah, the Maleficent boss, well, the Maleficent boss was hard. Not really. I, Maleficent I boss most... was kind of, was gimmicky, but I had a real time with that. Uh, the final Magic. boss, don't even get me started on the final boss. Ooh, Shadow, have well, you been in the game? Yet. Yeah. Yeah, so you know the final boss. 
Yes, it's very annoying. Yeah. Um, a lot of the bosses in this game actually employ their own gimmicks. For example... It's, the, it's the, not even that he's gimmicky, he's just hard. The, the main reason that I, got, that I gave up on this game the last time through was not because of Jafar, because I didn't actually make it to him, but I made it through the uh, Nightmare Before Christmas, the Halloween Town, and I got to... I Boogie. got to uh, Oogie Boogie, and I was just trying to do card fusion to actually take him down really quick. I ran out of cards and couldn't attack him, because in order to take him down, you have to actually defeat the dice that he rolls, which are always values of six. At that point in the game, the highest card of value that you've got usually is between seven and five. Yeah. And you have very few of them if you've been doing it right. It's, so, yeah. Th there's a there, lot of difficulty spikes in this game. Uh, it's very... There are difficulty spikes every, all, all over the place, but they're mainly due to gimmicks. Very few bosses in this game are actually, actually hard. Different. Yeah. Or maybe you guys just suck at this game. No. no. Dude, there are serious <laughs> you have to go find die, okay? I'll admit Let's that just I say I was able to I was able to button mash through most of the game. As was I, but I got to a boss that was actually difficult and I couldn't defeat him. So I oh god, him. I have to use actual strategy. God. <laughs> I can't just A button. I have to play the game. I'll but admit I'll admit I didn't actually try him after the first three times, but I didn't want to get pissed off at the game and just say it was horrible, because it's not. There are a lot of good, unique things about this game that people should actually go out and try. That being said, there's a lot of downsides. But what if that is the game, just button mashing? It, uh, it is what it is. is. There are games. There are games that, that seem like a button mashing, but there are some strategy. Like Ninja Gaiden, you can button mash, but you won't get very far. Stuff like that, because there is like a lot of nuanced kind of strategy. Marvel vs. Capcom 3. <laughs> Roll your face like a controller. Uh, Street Fighter. Yeah. No. Yes. No. Street Fighter is just down, uh, down diagonal turtle, forward. Turtle hard. And then X, and then you do Hidoken and win. Just keep on doing that, you win. But that's not true. Not all the characters in Street Fighter have Hidoken. Sorry. Use Ryu and then do that. Eh, I like Kenan. Oh, well, you use Chun Li and then you Hidoken with Chun Li. Okay, but we're getting out of the point. Anyway, what is the point? The point, the point is, is, this is this is definitely a good game that people should pick up, but it's a much better game if you pick up Kingdom Hearts 1 first. No, no. no. If to you, be you honest... Don't pick this game up if you haven't played the first No, one. to be honest, if you have a PlayStation 2, just pick up Rechain the Memories. Yeah. To be honest, just pick that. It's, it's, it's so much easier to play. It, it's the same card battle system, but it's on the PlayStation 2. And so it's in better graphics, and it's 3D. Well, it's pseudo 3D. You know, 3D models and such. Yeah. But you actually got an area of range, so you can be more precise and... yeah. Yeah. That's definitely a thing that this game has issues with in normal combat. Enemy sprites overlaying each other. Yep. Uh, yeah. That is a problem. As far as the story goes, I have to say that I was actually entertained by this story, you know? The whole story, the story as Sora progresses, he ends up, he ends, uh, one of the main plot points of the Tower of Oblivion is that as you progress, your memories either become lost or altered, and we find out that, spoiler alert, never mind. Yeah. That's, a, that's the thing that I notice about this story, is that I think it actually gets to you emotionally because the, because they're using Disney characters, for Christ's no, sake. No, the like, Disney characters. You, you are, the Disney you characters are pretty, really you nope. have to like these guys, because they've been around for like 70 years now. Well, you don't have to like them. Other than Donald Trump. Other than Donald Trump. Uh, so he would like... <laughs> Wait, Gerda, talk. Other no, than no, Gerda, don't talk. I want to say something. Is that right? <laughs> okay. The, for, the formula is basically the same. It's like a basic adventure story formula. So I'm guessing that the real uh, strategy to get to the player is to use the characters against them. No. You drag emotional tension. No. The only real... Like I was trying to say, the only real uh, uh, Disney characters that actually stick throughout the plot are Hercules, kind of. Not really. Yeah, not really. Um, Donald and Goofy. And the only Square Enix characters that get that actually matter are Sora and Riku. And they're not even really Square Enix, because they, right. they haven't been in any other game. The, the rest of Organization 13 is really cool, especially Axel. 
Axel's but a bitch. in all seriousness, they don't really affect that much. Axel sets up a lot of things, and he does actually do quite a bit. Marloxia. But, <coughs> but there's not much really there. So basically, what you're saying is, I was giving, I was about to give the game too much credit. Actually, yeah. Yeah. Okay. How about that? I mean, the organization 13 is the org organization 13 is cool and all, but to be honest, I kind of feel that's why I stopped liking Kingdom Hearts because the game became less focused on Disney and Square Enix and the fun of it all, and became a more emo pseudo emo. Oh look, organization 13. Here we go. We're another Final Fantasy game. You guys, mad milk, 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 type franchise by Square Enix. Like, to be all, in all, and in all seriousness, this game does get really dark, and it will actually affect you emotionally if you bother following no, well, it. The problem is, if you look in like the newer Kingdom Hearts games, there are no more Desi characters. Now it's all, oh, Organization 13, Keyblade War, Keyblades, Keyblades, something that sort of not even existing anymore, Ventus. Yeah, because they huh? realized Organization 13 was a hell of a lot more interesting than Sora's Adventures. Yeah. How could they take out the Disney characters? Because, because people didn't care about that. Anymore. Everyone knows the Disney character's backstory. So we decided to go make a lot of prequels and have Organization 13 fleshed out. I mean, the only thing, uh, Disney character that's actually, you know, prominent are Pete and Maleficent. No. And, um, the wizard from, um, the... Wh wh which one was Mickey in? Where Yen Sid. Yen Sid. Yen Sid. Yeah, Yen Sid. Yen Sid. It's it's Disney's name backwards. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and Yen Sid is, um, he's, he's still in the newer games, because he, he if you play Kingdom Hearts 2, he's in that castle thing. Yeah. Yeah. The King make, will occasionally make appearances, but, yeah. There's, it's all pretty much Organization uh, uh, 13. Yeah, now. after Kingdom Hearts 2, it was practically, King, uh, Organization 13 took over the franchise, and Disney pretty much mostly, for the most part, got booted booted out, but it seems like Donald and Goofy still are in there somewhere. Yeah. Maleficent is still there somewhere, I think. I don't know. Maleficent is like one of the heads of Organization 13. No, she she's not in Organization 13, but she's in like she's the not? Disney... Cut. No, there's 13 people in the Organization 13, and there are huh. the people of the Organization 13. Well, actually, there's 14 members, but we're not getting into that. Okay. Uh, that's for another story. Yeah, that, that's another hour. Uh, so all in all, what did you guys think of this game? I have played it and beat it when I was younger. Fuck the last boss. It took me forever to beat that motherfucker. But aside from that, it's pretty good. It, 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 if you play for a long time, it'll get repetitive. If you just take your time and play it through like you're supposed to, you'll enjoy it. For the most part, if you know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. And you don't I use the speed-up feature because it, it you'll pr probably die more if you just use a speed-up feature. Yeah. Like Burke did, because he's a scrub and is impatient and can't finish any game he plays. I don't know what you're talking about. Actually, I used the speed-up feature, and I pretty much got through the game with it. Well, I mean, don't use a speed-up feature during combat. No, because you would get destroyed. During combat, I'm talking... No, actually, I, I actually did. How? Ugh, how did you do you're that? you're good enough at the game, you can do that. God. I tried that when I tried using it on my Vietnamese uh, GBA. It didn't work right. The one I let you borrow. Yeah. Then you broke it. Good job. Yeah. It, it, that caught your second house on fire. <laughs> Thank you. I, 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 really, I really like the part where you burned my house down. <laughs> Burke, we need to get you some, like, fireproof wood. How about you get me a Famicom that actually freaking works? How about that? Why, uh, you, why would you want work. a Famicom? How about you, Shadow? What did you think of the game? Uh, it wasn't a bad game. I, I think they could have certainly improved it. I mean, like, what we were saying about the PS2 design of it, it would probably be better if they could have made it a little better for the Game Boy itself. I, I mean, to be honest, they, the only reason it was on the Game Boy is because the PSP was... F I don't even know if the PSP was out yet, was it? Or it was just like being released. Or something. Cause the it, was PSP it was probably just being released because the PSP... Yeah came out like the Game Boy Advance and the DS. I, I, I honestly feel that if they would have waited and put this on the PSP and because if they would have waited and put this on the PSP they could have put it in its uh, 
3D ish graphic type deal like they did with um that Birth would by Sleep. Be formatting the entire game to work on the PSP's hardware. I mean, I mean, if they would have been designing for it, he's good at P uh, design uh, platformer. <sighs> Designers get the console um, when like okay, let's put the Wii U out there. Developers, oh, that's the word. Developers, they already have the Wii, the Wii U, U hardware, hardware, so they can design for it. If 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 they wanted it bad enough, they could have said, you know, can you give us the PSP hardware so we'll give you a Kingdom Hearts game to boost your console? And to be honest, it probably would have been extremely better on the PSP. Well, yeah, it's kind of like the whole God of War thing, like the mobile God of War games that are a lot more, a lot like the actual console versions just because the PSP has is more is capabilities. Capable, capable of doing that. Yeah, it has more capabilities. And if they would have waited for the DS, it would have been, it would have took too long because they already had, they would have already had Kingdom Hearts 2 out and it would have been out of order. So they probably did this just to keep everything in order. But yeah, yeah. Well, to be honest, I like the game even though I didn't play the first one. I probably would have liked it more if I would have played the first one, just because I would have known what was going on. But it, it was fun. Uh, actually, to be honest, even if you did play the first one, you'd only understand a little bit. If you played the second one, then you would understand because you get the you get really like into the Organization Thirteen stuff, and you get to realize but a lot of things. This game came the second one has a shit ton of startup. This game came up before the second one, right? Yeah. Yeah, so this was before the second. So, so wouldn't you just need uh, no, to know the characters in the first one just to have context of who not they are? Not really. No, none of the organi Organization 13 was never heard of in um, Kingdom Hearts 1. They Their first appearance was in Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories. And then well, that's not entirely true. Yes, I mean, it like, is. At the very end of Kingdom Hearts 1, Organization 13 has a few characters thrown in, but they're not referred to as Organization 13 No, there. No, they don't. There's Zemnis. Really? There's Zemnis. And he's not even Organization 13. He's the end boss, but he's then not... why did Riku leave? What? Riku left after Kingdom Hearts 1. He, the, if you've seen the ending of Kingdom Hearts 1, you would understand. I know that Riku and Sora technically had a big fight, but I don't know what it was about. The, the Organization 13 came out of nowhere, honestly. Yes, they did. I know that much. But... Ow. But it's the whole enjoyment of the game that if you play the second one, is it more just the fact that since the Organization 13 is introducing this game that you not, you're like, oh yeah, I don't know why, what these guys are doing and why they're doing Though, it. Though, to be honest, the end boss, which is a member of the Organization 13, is never really referred to ever again <laughs> in any Kingdom Hearts game. <laughs> he isn't, That's though. You kill... you Actually, I don't... Uh, well, of course you kill him. He's a final boss. But you th that's it. He's never referred to again. Is he Shadow? I don't, I don't remember hearing any of him in... Uh, he might be referred to in a few of the prequels, but... No. <laughs> you never really see him. He might be in the new one, but you never... You never saw him before, and you never heard of him before. It was... Ugh. He kind of seems like he was just thrown in as a 13th <laughs> member. When that should have been Maleficent. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> anyway, Cloud, you've been uh, listening to us the whole time. Any questions? No, I don't have any questions. What are your thoughts? Would you like to pick this game up? Actually, no. No, I don't I don't want to have anything to do with this game. Why? <laughs> it's it's just... It, it doesn't have a hook for me. That's why. It, it doesn't interest me. Don't care. So I'm not even going to bother. And from what I hear... It doesn't sound like the game. It doesn't sound like I'm missing like a hell of a lot, you know. In all seriousness, you're not, but it's definitely something that people should at least consider picking up. Why? Consider picking up, and then say no. <laughs> yeah, that'll work. I don't know. I, I think it's, it's worth like trying. Like you'd want to rent, you wouldn't want to buy. Yeah, I game. bought it. I bought it when it first came out. I don't really regret it, but I don't know what I did with it. Sad. Now, while I was playing the game, I really was enjoying. I really was enjoying myself. I thought the soundtrack was all right. I thought the gameplay itself was okay. The boss fights were a few. Of the boss fights were gimmicky, but not too bad. Um, one of the things that we didn't really touch base on was the combination of magic and the combination of summons. Summons. Um, let's see. Summons are the very Disney, the main characters from Disney, and the and main villains. Things. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but it, those are different things depending on who. Yeah, they are. Like, like Simba, like Simba roars and he'll deal damage to all enemies. I believe. 
no, Donald comes in and he'll either heal you or cast a spell. Goofy will come in and say, come on! And then he'll hit Jack, things with the shield. Jack Skeleton will just do some derpy thing. And, uh, let's see. Jack Skeleton can cast uh, one of three spells. Yeah. Um, it's either Gravity, uh, Thundara. Or Arrow, or I think. Thundara. Is it Stop? I think it's Stop. Um, it might be Stop, actually. You're right. And, um... And if you fuse two of him together, then he'll actually upgrade those spells to Stopka, Thandaga, or, uh, or Gravisha. Gravaga. And with three, I think he actually casts uh, the, the tier three spells Oh, twice. yeah. But yeah, card fusion on this in this game is really best to use, at least from my experiences, with allies, sum and allies and summons. Oh, and with spells, practically it's your basic Final Fantasy formula, Fyra... Fire, 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 Raga, Kira, Kira, Kuraga, Gravaga, 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 blah, 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 blah. It, it, yeah. it, it's, it's pretty basic. The, the more A's it has on the end, the more powerful yeah. it is, practically. Yeah, like Thundra or, or Fire Gun, all that Just PS. remember, guys, if you, you get a sword and you put Aga at the end of it, it does more damage. Just saying, guys. Just saying, so call, call it a Sword Aga. Sword Aga, go. Pretty much. Terrible joke was terrible. I should probably, I should probably feel bad. Nah, it was alright. So guys, I think that all, that all about wraps us up here. Any closing thoughts? I still think Kirby Pinball for the uh, DS was a better game. But, Damn. But that's just me. Oh, oh no. I'm gonna leave that one alone because <laughs> I'm, you know, leaving that alone. Burke, you? Uh, I liked it. I like it more if I play the first one, but I probably won't ever play the first one ever. Why? I don't know. I just kind of like with like the same thing with Cloud. I've, I I know it's a good game. But I just don't ex don't have an extreme amount of interest in playing it. I'll probably get to it eventually one day. Gurnlagen. What? Oh nothing. Right, that shut is shut the, the fuck up, Gurnat. <laughs> what do you mean I think Gurnat? <laughs> oh derp. God, that ass. Anyway, um, rating. Oh, I was gonna say rating, but fuck you. I think Shadow mailed on us. Oh well. No, I'm still here. I'm okay. I'm still here. At least that don't lie. Uh, my thoughts. Well, I think it could have been a little bit better. I like the story. I like the music. It it wasn't bad. I just think it could have um, been better. It could have been better. It, it, I mean, every game could have been better, to be honest. But, I mean, this one had a couple... A period of time. Shut up, Burke. Uh, yeah, Ocarina of Time could have lost the Water Temple. <laughs> hey, the Water Temple was balanced and was an easy temple to complete. You shut your Argument mouth. maybe for next week. Yeah. Yes, yeah, argue about it next week. But, uh, my thoughts now? Sure. Uh, let's see. It was... The music can get repetitive if you're getting into so many battles because you'll be listening to the theme you'll be listening to the music of the place get into a battle hear the battle theme go back get into another battle go back go into another back. it gets kind of repetitive but you know it's they're they're not like to the point where, but they're all really soft that's the thing there's like nothing really extremely fast beat and hard that makes you like oh this is giving me a headache so that's good um under the sea except that <laughs> Um, gameplay wise, it's pretty, it's pretty <laughs> smooth, um, there is a pretty, there, there can be some d difficulty spikes, but they're not that hard to get over, um, you can butt mash pretty well, yeah, there's some butter mashing, but, and that's every game nowadays, isn't it, um, I gotta admit that, a lot, a lot of, uh, more popular games have, have turned into, uh, heavy button mashers, <laughs> But they're strategic <laughs> button mashers. So yeah. what? They're still button mashers. To oh. quote uh, the Little Mermaid, the seaweed is always greener in somebody else's lake. What? Oh, 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 oh. I see what they did there. And that's how I know. That's how we know this podcast has run, run its course. All right. Well, I'd give it a mm, three point five out of five. I'll I, I, I agree with that rating. I'll give it a... Burke doesn't six, count because he's... 5 out of 10. Okay. Out of 10. Well, that's not uh -huh. on the point five scale. We, we don't have a scale. 5 point scale. scale. I hate the 5 scale. Gerdet? I'm going to give this a 7 out of 10. I enjoyed the game enough to actually, you know, enjoy playing through most of it. 
but the random difficulty spikes and the repetitive combat really sold it in for me. And Plus, I, I really couldn't get behind the card system. And Shadow? Uh, I'd probably give it a 7.5 out of 10. Because you're broken. Oh, well, it is a decent game. Could be improved upon. But uh, it's pretty solid. Overall, it's pretty solid. Overall, it's a solid game. Yeah, it, it's solid, to be honest. It most definitely is a solid game. There, there's no real glitches or bugs with it, with it, which is good, but no game really. No getting. I've never really played a GBA game that had glitches. Uh, I have. I have. Actually, I play one of those uh, <sighs> stupid uh, toy soldier games on a GBA. Time to kick Burke from the call. <laughs> Come yes. on, toy soldier games are notorious for glitches. Yes. I should remember, it was an army, so I don't know what game it yeah, was. Yeah, army men. They're notorious army. for glitches. Yeah. Well, guys, this has been Corbinick. Shadow Wolf. Burp 169. Gerda, it's your turn. Oh, okay. Gerda 14, the chosen one. Fuck Shadow. you, Gerda. <laughs> and Cloud. AKA Butter yeah. Scrub. Yeah. So, and we'll be back with another podcast um, in about a year. About, about a year from year. now. Well, we'll be back someday. I don't know when we feel like it. So, sit tight and wait, like good little <laughs> listeners. Stay tuned. Yeah. Stay tuned for. Also, stay tuned. Wait, stay tuned for Good at Storytime Part Two. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Thank you all and have a good good day. Yeah. See you guys. See you guys next year. Whoosh. See ya.